Today we get back to the spooky stuff and discuss the haunting of Alma Fielding. What terrorized Alma and her family? Why was it so aggressive? And what did they decide to do about it? We'll answer these questions and pay visits to our old friends, Nandor Fodor and Patreon favorite, Jeff the Talking Mongoose. I'm Mike. I'm Ian. And I'm Dave. If you thought Fodor was a French entryway that didn't exist, stick around. We'd like to reintroduce you to our friend, Nandor. This is Necronomapod. Spirit that throws things about, makes things vanish and reappear, and causes a good deal of annoyance. It is called a ghost because the agency which does these things is unseen. So people have no other way of designating it as a ghost. Actually, the poltergeist is not a ghost. It's a kind of a psychological outburst accompanied by some release of nervous energy from certain organisms which for motives particular to themselves are responsible for the phenomena. Are these the spirit entities that come? No, I don't believe that they are spirits. So it seems like your um, weed-induced mistake last week of mm-hmm. researching uh, Brandon Lawson paid off pretty well. People seem to enjoy the episode. Seems like it. That's what they call failing upwards. <laughs> weed-induced mistake. <laughs> but people seem to really like that one. Yeah. It was an interesting story, I thought. Yeah, I think, uh, and I think most people agreed kind of with your summary at the end of what happened. There's a lot more people agreed with it than I thought. I didn't see a lot of people bashing it. Yeah. I don't know what, what you guys saw. Out there I saw the quite a few actual personal attestations uh, yeah. attributing that behavior to exactly what uh, Ian described. So, yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say like missing people came out of the woodwork. and like, hey, I was missing for a while. And this was because of this. <laughs> no. And I was like, God damn, we solved some cases. No, like people who had been, uh, you know, eyewitness to people in meth induced psychosis confirming his suspicions. Which I didn't even know was a thing until yeah. I started reading about it. I didn't know that you could get like that from I didn't either. From meth. I thought you just stayed up all night and cleaned your house a bunch yeah. of times. Like acid is the only thing that, or ecstasy can fuck you up for life yeah. too. Okay. I think. See, so now you know, Dave, that meth isn't always so great. It's so glam- glamorous <laughs> when it gets portrayed in those before and after pictures. So and now I know better. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that was that. People seem to like it. The missing episodes, man. People love those. Yeah. They're the saddest ones to talk about because a lot of them are still, you know, open and, sure. um, you know, maybe went cold, but there's still people out there missing. And it's just really creepy. It's a terrifying. lot of them. Yeah. You know, especially the ones like where people just straight up vanish. Right. Or it's like, you know, you think about the, um, uh, like Ariel Castro situation. And it's like, well, the, you know, those girls were gone, what, 10 years or whatever locked up. But like, who's to say that they couldn't just like listen to podcasts and like, they couldn't like log in and hear a podcast talking about them going missing. Yeah. Like that shit's fucked up. Well, and you know that that same scenario is going on right now in multiple locations across this country, right. across the world. Yeah. It wasn't an isolated incident. Right. Right. There's something happening right now that we're going to cover in a few years. It's actually happening right now. And some scumbag has some girls locked up in his house right now. Of course they do. Mm-hmm. Why'd you look at me when you said that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, pal. You're the pee break uh, serial killer. You sneak out when these pee breaks. God knows what you're up. I'll tell you what, since we switched to whiskey and vodka, I am not peeing as much. And Ian, I think, is loving it. <laughs> I've noticed it. I've noticed. Well, you're not chugging it as quick as, you know, we are when we got the old uh, Diet Millers going. Yeah. That poor keg is uh, itching for some attention. <laughs> the only clowns like whose it. health plan is, <laughs> includes switching to a, a, a liter and a half of crown instead yeah. of beer. I mean, you're not getting the calories, so. Yeah, I'm not feeling as bloated. <laughs> and to be clear, Dave's doing this with me. This is not just I. Yeah, the beer just makes me full sometimes. I just need a break. That's all I wanted. I'm not trying to be a healthier person. I just don't want to feel like an unhealthy person. <laughs> and for all my life, I have eaten all the shit I could and drank all the shit I could, and I've gotten away with it. And recently, not so much. I'm going to start smoking cigarettes when I'm on my Peloton. Maybe that'll help, too. <laughs> it can't hurt, right? Nobody has ever said that that's been bad. 
like Californication where Hank's jogging like in Venice and he stops to have a smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't he wearing the little derby hat when he's running? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't the Godfather do a video where he's running on a treadmill smoking weed? Yeah, it's when he was, it was like a joke <laughs> that he was training for the Royal Rumble. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> so we're still being healthy boys. It's fine. Yeah. Or at least when I wake up, I'm feeling healthy ish. Er. But not, I'm feeling not, not healthy. So that's good. <laughs> Do you feel better in the morning on whiskey? Well, absolutely. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. No, I mean, I wasn't, I'm not usually waking up with hangovers anyways, but just feel better, more, uh, you know, that's sluggish, clear headed, sluggish. Yeah. You don't feel so bloated and heavy and lethargic all day. So there's your answer, kids. Sw- switch to whiskey. It's healthy for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're literally proving that right now. I used to always like, I don't usually drink whiskey, bourbon, scotch with, uh, on ice. I always drink it neat and I still like it better that way, but it really helps to put ice in it. Cause you do get a little bit, it's diluted a little and helps you feel a little better. Sure. And it's like having a glass of water. Yeah, drink, drink, I mean, right? This is pretty much a glass of water. <laughs> I drink right? like, This is, this is water. <laughs> like when you get like lettuce and tomato on a burger, like it's a salad at that point. So you're fine. <laughs> We should start a health tips podcast. We had tons of them. Yeah. Right. In 10 seconds, we had two fantastic tips for people. Talk about longevity. You guys are going to live forever. <laughs> if you follow these simple rules. Doesn't count as smoking a cigarette. If you only smoke half of it, <laughs> that's just taking a hit off someone else's cigarette. <laughs> so, all right. Well, go live that way and get back to us. What do we got today? Something fun. Back to the ghost stories. Spooky stuff. Haven't My favorite one. kind of shows. It's been a while. These are great. This is like a low key one too. I've never heard of this one before. I just randomly found this. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of eyewitnesses to this one. More than usual. Way more than usual. Yeah. On February 20th, 1938, the newest issue of the Sunday Pictorial started to circulate around London and surrounding areas. The newspaper featured a large picture of Adolf Hitler and was warning of Nazi Germany's future invasion of Austria. And next to that headline was a slightly smaller one that read, quote, terror night in home wrecked by ghosts. I believe that was accurate. Hitler annexed Austria about three weeks after that. Was it three weeks? There you go. Something like that. According to the. They're saying your story lines up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So far, you're off to a good start. <laughs> I'm just giving you a check mark. A for accuracy, buddy. According to the reporting, the haunting was centered around a 34 year old housewife named Alma Fielding, who lived in Thornton Heath in the borough of Croydon. And the household consisted of Alma, her husband Leslie, their 16 year old son Donald, and a man who sounds like he was in his 20s or 30s named George, who was renting a room from the Fieldings. My favorite part about doing these these British shows are all the comments you're going to get from people in the UK tomorrow. Yeah. Roy, that's not how you pronounce it, wanker. <laughs> the best. I mean, I, th- I feel like I got Thornton Heath right. Do you? I think so. <laughs> you're a bloody idiot. That's not how you say it at all. This is how you have to read their messages when they send them to you. <laughs> Just give Dave your phone let him read them to you. On February 13th, Alma was at a friend's house in the neighborhood when all of a sudden she got a terrible pain in her pelvis area. She rushed home and Alma was really concerned about this pain because she had significant kidney issues when she was a little girl. Oh, I thought maybe college mom time traveled and stretched out her love canal. No, I'm pretty sure that's what uh, fucking George was doing here, right? Like he was like the living bull for the family, wasn't he? He was probably putting it to Alma. I think it was her son, George. Was no, I thought that was, that's Donald is his son. I thought they were both sons. <laughs> no, the one. No, a George. man who sounds like he was in his 20s or 30s renting a room. Oh, yeah. Okay. He was just like some dude renting. Oh, all right. Sorry about that. Renting that pussy, too. <laughs> Poor Leslie. Has a ghost and a bull in his We house. call it Snatch over here, Mike. <laughs> snatch. Apologies. I don't know if that's true or not, but. We'll go with that. That's what it's called. <laughs> we gave Australia Fosters. We're given uh, UK uh, Snatch. So Alma thought that this pain might be kidney related, and she was prepared for these incidents. She kept a stock of antibiotics and sedatives to help her sleep when these kidney issues happened. 
So Alma took her medication and got in bed to rest. A couple days later, she was still in bed not feeling well, and now her husband Leslie was in bed with her. Leslie had gotten a bunch of teeth pulled because he needed dentures, and he was miserable, like constantly bleeding from his gums and shit like that. Through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of that week, Alma and Leslie were stuck in bed together feeling terrible. On Friday evening, Alma still had a bit of a fever, and she saw a handprint on the mirror above the fireplace in their bedroom. This wasn't a normal handprint. She said that it had five fingers and a thumb. Hmm. Girls with the six digits give way better hand jobs, in my experience. Yeah. Think so? Yeah. Okay. Extra grip, right? Sure. I mean, if you got the cock for it. There's got to be some <laughs> cocks out there that are like two-finger cocks, right? <laughs> That's true. Just saying. That might not be it's great in certain game. situations. It's an inches game. Good to know. Just saying. <laughs> A lot of small penis men out there listening right now. Like, yeah. Mike knows. Sometimes all you need is a thumb and an index finger. What does JR say on uh, his podcast? He calls people he doesn't like uh, guys whose nuts you could fit in a thimble. Yeah. He says that all the time. <laughs> so Alma thought that her fever and laying in bed all week had gotten to her and her mind was playing tricks on her. She was pretty progressive for 1938. She put her trust in science and stayed away from religion and believing in ghosts and things like that. Oh, I'm a big fan of Alma. Good for you. As it got closer to midnight on Friday, Alma and Leslie were winding down for sleep when they heard something shatter close to them. Alma turned on the lamp on her side of the bed and there was a broken drinking glass on the floor. Then as they were trying to process where this glass came from, another one just kind of materialized out of thin air and went flying through the room and smashed against the wall. It's pretty startling, right? Yeah. Is that That's, nowhere like that? Is that new for like poltergeist kind of episodes? Like something materializing out of nowhere? Um, or at least someone witnessing that? It, it wasn't. It didn't sound like they actually witnessed it. Like it sounded like they were looking at the broken one, mm. like trying to process like what the fuck is happening? And then out of the corner of their eye, another a one whipped Something against the wall and they're like, got it. where would that even come from? Yeah. Well, that would certainly be creepy. I That's, think I've seen that in a movie. I'm trying to remember how they shot that. We just see that kind of the air open up and something starts flying at you. And yeah. I can't place what movie that is, but certainly I can't. So. They should have just closed their blinds. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's coming in. Leslie's knee-jerk reaction was to tell Alma to turn the light back off. She did, and as they were laying there being silent, a gust of wind came out of nowhere because the windows weren't open, um, and it blew their blankets up over their heads. Well, Leslie could have just Dutch ovened her. <laughs> Doesn't prove anything. He probably did. <laughs> Le Leslie started yelling for Alma to turn the lights back on, but now the lamp wouldn't turn on. Their son, Donald, heard all the commotion and came to see what was going on. As soon as Donald opened the bedroom door, a container of Alma's makeup flew across the room and almost hit him in the face. Not long after that, George followed into the bedroom to see what was going on, and he was hit in the face with a shilling and a penny. It's like shit flying all over the place. Like a picture like Poltergeist in the, in the yeah. bedroom. There's stuff swirling all <laughs> around the room when they open the door. But th so this is like right at them too. Like this is almost attacking them. Yeah, this is very aggressive. Yeah. Not like the uh, black monk of Pontefract. That one was just playing tricks on people. And yeah, he's a fun one. Yeah. You want that one in He's a house. monk, you know. <laughs> Loves Jesus. Not gonna hurt he's having people. a good time. Like can you imagine and be like, uh, uh, black monk, uh, can you get us a beer? <laughs> and just like one floats over to you. It materializes. <laughs> Great. Grazie. Grazie. <clears throat> so Donald went to get some matches and using the matches, he walked over to look at the lamp on Alma's side of the bed. Donald found that the light bulb was missing. And after looking around the room, he found it sitting on a chair on the other side of the room and it was hot to the touch. Everyone was on edge waiting for something else to happen. But as hours went by without anything breaking, they finally all got a little bit of sleep. Then when the sun came up, Alma was feeling well enough to go downstairs to the kitchen to try and make some food. She grabbed an egg out of the refrigerator, but it flew out of her hand and smashed against the wall. 
Then a saucer raised off the counter by itself, snapped in half, and then shattered on the floor. So I feel like there was no like warm up period where like like just the marbles rolling down the hall. Yeah, like, this is just straight aggression for like th- throughout the night and then right into the next morning. Yeah, it's like shit kicked off out of nowhere. Yeah. It's almost like she brought this home with her, and it just went this zero to a hundred immediately. It happen happens to naughty women who cuck their husbands. <laughs> Visited by a spirit. You're familiar with that <laughs> happening, so uh, well, that, I don't stay. Though. You I'm not fucking George. He's living in the house. Like, you get in, get out, go home, and go to sleep. So you never rent rooms from women whose husbands you cut. <laughs> That's unbecoming of a professional. <laughs> First of all, you don't rent anything. Second of all, if you're gonna sleep there, you sleep in the husband's side of the bed, and he sleeps on the couch. Okay. Or like the. Have you not done a cucking before, Dave? <laughs> like that thing Michael Scott slept on. At the bottom of the bed. That's right. <laughs> it's like the, like the little basket you put blankets in. <laughs> Dave, you got to do a commercial for my uh, Cucking 101 class where I train uh, the fellow uh, uh, okay. wannabe upcoming bulls how to do it properly. So we'll put it out there. Let me write that down. Yeah. Okay. Just saying, you like making commercials. There's one for you. I haven't added, made a added, commercial in a long time. Add it to your list. Closeyourblinds.com, I think, was the last commercial I made. That's true. Well, I'm doing a seminar next weekend in uh, Raleigh. Also, I'm not sure that this is real because they don't just eat eggs for breakfast. It has to have uh, beans and bacon and sausage (laughs) and mushrooms and tomatoes and bread. How do you function after you eat an English breakfast? Like, Don't you just want to go back to sleep? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, who can do that? I mean, we say that, and then we have, you know, fucking egg McMuffins with hash browns and (laughs) Baconators. (laughs) (laughs) Like, the omelets with everything in them and breakfast buffets. We just stack it up, and there's just more spread out horizontally on the plate. That's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. We put it all in an egg, and it just counts. Oh, it's just one omelet (laughs) with literally everything they have on their plate in our omelet. Minus the beans. It's a good observation. The odd. Yeah, the beans got to go. Yeah, I can't do that. Breakfast? Don't get me wrong. I love beans. But I don't know. Yeah, for breakfast, that's odd. I could eat tomatoes anytime. I'm a big tomato fan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, enjoy your English breakfast, I guess. And then go to the pub and get drunk on Guinness and Smithix. You don't like Smithix. Oh, no. I I like Smithix. I don't like it at all. I can drink one and then it's... Carlsberg. That's what I drank when I was there. It's good. I don't know why, how I got on that. Anyways. Okay. That's Danish beer, isn't it? I think. Does that sound right? It's what we had on the tap. It's what they someone poured for me at one point, and I just stuck with it. I drink Guinness all day. I don't like that Smithic I love uh, Guinness. Guinness is much better, yeah. but I could drink both. Yeah, I drink Guinness all day. We have a little Irish pub in town. I just had Guinness at a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah? It's delightful. Sounds good. Sounds delightful. <laughs> Can you get a <laughs> traditional English breakfast there? I mean, they're not open at breakfast time, but because they have a lot of, you know. It's an Irish bar, though. That's true. I don't know why I thought that. I don't know. <laughs> What's a traditional Irish breakfast? Like a potato and whiskey? Whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> Just Jameson. Two shots of Jameson. <laughs> I would take that over an English breakfast because I feel like at least then I'd be ready to like go for the day go. as opposed to napping. <laughs> I don't like Jameson at all. I think it's awful. I don't know. I don't know the last time I had it. The Sunday pictorial had been running a series of stories asking people to write in about anything paranormal that they were experiencing. Like we said, Alma didn't believe in ghosts or the paranormal, but she couldn't explain what was going on. And the pictorial was the only source of information she knew of regarding these kinds of experiences. So Alma wrote to them, quote, please come to my house. There are things going on here. I cannot explain. Hmm. Were they offering any remuneration for these stories? Like, did, did this give her motivation to concoct it? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, that's a big question in some of these. Yeah, especially, um, like, during this time frame when newspapers were really into it and there was a lot of, uh, even with UFO stuff, newspapers were like, mm. you know, tell if you've seen a flying saucer, right in. So there was a lot of people trying to get money out of things like that and make up stories. Yeah. Although I think the motivation for some people is just to get in a newspaper. Yeah. Not necessarily monetary. Just bored, wanting yeah. some kind of attention. Yeah. People love attention. 
look at us. We started a podcast. <laughs> we're like, we're so great. More people need to be aware of this. <laughs> people would love this. We gotta take this. <laughs> no, really, it's called a blumpkin. <laughs> No, really, you're shitting, and she's blowing you, a blumpkin. <laughs> Never heard of this? We're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> That's one way to put it. A few days after receiving Alma's letter, the pictorial sent out two reporters to see what was going on and to see if they could verify that something paranormal was happening. As soon as Alma opened the front door for the two men, an egg came flying down the hallway and smashed at their feet. As Alma walked towards the kitchen, a china dog started rattling and a can opener flew from one of the kitchen drawers. I'm Googling what a can opener looks like in the 1830s. <laughs> it, it seems super fucking dangerous. Oh, you don't want one of those flying. Oh, at man. You. I thought they just had an English person with those teeth and they just <laughs> moved the can around in their mouth open. I think that's now. <laughs> Back then, they would have just crumbled, right? <laughs> They just tap them on the back of their head as they're spinning the uh, those sharp pointy rotted fang. I believe they would say Dave is taking a piss. <laughs> Seriously though, what's a China dog? Like it's just a, a dog made out of China? Yeah, yeah. Googling all this other shit. Hold no, on. it was a pink like uh, sculpture of a dog. Oh, all right. Dave, you can get a eight inch China dog. Uh, <laughs> Two of them on Wayfair for $60. <laughs> Half off right now. <laughs> no shit. I can have it to you by the end of next week. Wow. What do they look like? Not good. What the? Wait a minute. <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do with that? Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. I don't like that. I mean, if anything, we'd have to have a sexy golden retriever. We've already determined <laughs> that was the sexiest dog, right? I don't want Your words, that. not mine. <laughs> so Alma offered the men tea, and they would go talk in the front room. The men accepted, and as Alma was walking to sit down with them, the cup of tea and saucer spun out of her hands and exploded in midair. Alma tried to get another cup and saucer, and the same thing happened, but this time the glass cut Alma's thumb. Leslie, Donald, and George were all in the house, but according to the reporters, they couldn't have been responsible for what was going on. They were in plain sight when the objects were flying around and breaking. This story is told in a way to make it sound like it's impossible for this stuff to have been faked. I'm skeptical. Like that there weren't other people in the house or that they had everyone accounted for to, to like it wouldn't have been possible to have for anyone else to, to make the home. something. And we're also say you sell more newspapers with stories of this kind of stuff happening. Yeah, we're taking the, um, the reporter's word for it yeah is this a legitimate newspaper or is this like the weekly world news of the 30s in london yeah the next page was uh, bat boy <laughs> so you tell me it sounds pretty legit yeah i have no idea okay like it, how legitimate yeah i'm skeptical then the page after that was jfk jr still alive <laughs> <laughs> oh that's true one of those papers <laughs> one of those papers the pictorial published the article and under the headline it read quote this is the most curious front page story we have ever printed. In an ordinary terrace in Thornton Heath, some malevolent ghostly force is working miracles. Poltergeist, that's what the scientists call it. The spiritualists, they say it's all caused by a mischievous earthbound spirit. Mm. This was kind of the tail end of spiritualism, right? That had started in the 19th century. It was waning at that point, right? Yeah, this was getting towards the end of yeah. that whole boom of seances mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So they have a vested interest to keep their ideas alive, or I guess to make things like this sound like it is in line with the what spiritualists thought. Like, you know, requiring mediums and seances and hauntings and poltergeists and stuff. Well, I think that's a good example of why a newspaper would want to... Uh, hype this up a bit too because it, like seances and stuff those were super just commonplace like everybody was kind of yeah. having seances at, at certain points so it's going to sell a lot of papers yeah, and we talked about that in the ouija board episode like how before it got those evil things attached to it it was like housewives having seances with yeah. them and shit there's that i love lucy episode where she's playing with one right right 
on an inside page, the paper ran a photograph of Alma, Donald, and George, calling them, quote, the occupants of the house of fear. In this picture, they were all looking at a large piece of coal that had been thrown from their furnace by this unseen force. On Monday, February 21st, 1938, Nandor Fodor was approached by a friend of his, Reverend Francis Nicole. And Reverend Nicole asked Fodor if he had seen the story about the haunting that was going on in Thornton Heath. We've talked about Fodor a bunch of times on this show, um, both in Sunday shows and Patreon. Fodor was the chief investigator for the International Institute for Psychical Research. But before that, Fodor received a doctorate from the Royal Hungarian University of Science in Budapest. And then he worked as a direct associate of Sigmund Freud. Pretty cool name, Nandor Fodor. Kind of like sounds it. like he would Is be it? a character yeah. in Lord of the Rings, maybe. Yeah, something yeah. cool. I'd see that. You got to go see the village elder, uh, Nandor Fodor, before we can approve <laughs> that. Certainly a name. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Fodor was the pioneer of the theory that poltergeists are manifestations coming from someone's subconscious mind. That when there are things like trauma or a lot of emotion and turmoil happening in someone's lives, these quote unquote hauntings can occur. He was a proponent of the idea that there are no spirits of dead people haunting us, um, that in these rare cases where there's multiple witnesses seeing something happening, it's our subconscious minds projecting the energy into reality, which we don't even realize that we're doing. And thus, think it's the spirit of a dead person. Fodor said that these are almost always just energies that do not have a mind of their own, but in very, very rare cases, they can manifest into physical entities, a.k.a. a tulpa. Yeah! This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships can take work, especially the most important one you can have in your life, your relationship with yourself. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. But how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? Whether it be exercising, putting down your phone for a while, having a chat with a close friend, or just simply taking a nap, we need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves just as you would take care of a friend. And with that in mind, this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you that you matter just as much as everyone else does. And therapy is a great way to make sure you show up for yourself. Your mental health should be taken seriously. Nothing can cripple your day or stunt your motivation more than feeling depressed, anxious, or sad. We all have a lot to deal with in our daily lives, be it the struggles of work, keeping food on your table, or even paying the bills. Your mental health is one area that you shouldn't have to worry about. Whether life currently has you down or you're feeling unfulfilled, we're all experiencing our own form of strain on our mental health. And for that, BetterHelp is here for us. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you could be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Necronomapod listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Necro. So give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Necro. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Necro. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's podcast. So we successfully made it about three and a half years without having any technical difficulties. Yeah, we even made it through COVID. Uh, when you all last heard us prior to that commercial break, we were recording this on a, uh, a, a Wednesday evening. And here we are now for part two of this episode in the bright daylight <laughs> the next day. <laughs> redoing the second half of the show because somehow or another the file got fucked up. The second half of the file. Just the second half. What could have happened? We had some good content, too. Gone forever. <laughs> it was really funny, too. We were pretty it was the, starting to get off the rails. <laughs> and now in the middle of the day, so drinking Gatorade and kombucha. <laughs> Got my half of a McDonald's drink over here. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be old men and do our best to finish out this episode. 
It'd be all right. Yeah. So I hope apologies. the board's not haunted or something like the we tulpatized <laughs> tulpatized the the card or something. Yeah. So anyway, so that the flow of the episode might be a little off because uh, obviously it's different days. We're recording the first half and the second half, but apologies that uh, that hasn't happened before, and hopefully will never happen again. But what are we talking about? Well, I guess the listeners are like, just fucking continue the story. Like, you were just talking about it 30 seconds ago. For us, we got to like, you know, shake the cobwebs out. So anyways, Ian, as you were. So like we said at the beginning of the episode, Fodor had his hand in a bunch of subjects that we've covered. Uh, there might be more that we've done, but off the top of my head, when I was writing the outline, uh, Enfield Poltergeist, the Philip Experiment, and of course, Jeff the Talking Mongoose. We covered Jeff on Patreon, but essentially Jeff was the imaginary friend of a girl that lived in a very remote area called the Isle of Man, where she had no friends and it was just her and her small family. Her father James came up with this imaginary friend for her and not long after, poltergeist activity started. And the family really fed into it. They're like, oh, that's just Jeff. And they built it and built it until Jeff manifested into a physical talking mongoose which I picture him personally to look like an otter that can talk. And he had a very high voice, right? Yes, Jeff? he did. Jeff the Talking Mongoose is probably on the Mount Rushmore of Patreon, right? It's a hilarious episode. It was pretty funny. Yeah. It's uh, And that character it's is... It's pretty interesting. I think Jeff even stopped by several times. He did. During the, the Patreon episode. He I likes think he to did. visit. Yeah. I wonder if he's going to show up tonight. He's a sassy little guy. <laughs> he's got a lot to say sometimes. Yeah. Hey, I'm a mongoose, not an otter, fuck boy. <laughs> See, he just pops in whenever he wants. Maybe he <laughs> fucked with our chip. He messed might, up the whole episode. He might have. It could be. Dickhead. Anyways, that's on patreon.com slash Necronomapod. Jeff, the talking mongoose. He had like little weird cartoon hands, kind of. He didn't yeah. have paws. Really creepy to think about. <laughs> it's a customizable of- tulpa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that all tulpas are customizable, right? You create them. Yeah, like you create a mongoose mm. in your mind, you're like... Let's give him better hands, though, so he can uh, <laughs> give me a back rub now and then. Better hands and a huge dick on that mongoose. <laughs> Nandor studied Jeff's case extensively, and he went out to the Isle of Man to stay with the Irving family for a week to see Jeff. Nandor never actually got to see Jeff and only heard him once. The time Nandor heard Jeff was as Nandor was leaving. Nandor left a letter behind for Jeff and as he was walking out, he heard Jeff yell out to James Irving, quote, read it out, you fat-headed gnome. <laughs> and just for the hell of it, here's that letter that uh, Fodor left for Jeff. I couldn't find it when we did um, the actual Jeff episode on Patreon, but I did find it while researching this. So, so here's a nice little teaser, and then maybe people will uh, want to sign up for Patreon and listen. Dear Jeff, I'm very disappointed that you did not speak to me during the whole week which I spent here. I came from a long way and took a lot of trouble on collecting all your clever sayings, and I shall lecture about you in my institute where people are extremely interested in your doings. I hoped that you would be kind and generous. I believe you to be a very good and generous mongoose. I brought you chocolates and biscuits, and I would be very happy if you had done something for me. Will you send me a message, or will you write a letter to me? I should be very pleased if you gave a definite promise that you would speak to me. I would come again in the summer. P.S. Congratulations on Balamore. You scored there, Jeff. With best wishes, your friend, Nandor Fodor. (laughs) So so that last bit about the Balamore, I think that's how you say it. It was like this, not a castle or a palace, but like a mansion, something. Mm. Uh, Because Jeff said he was from India. That was one of his He's a world traveler, that (laughs) He He had multiple places he was from. But he described this place, I guess, perfectly, like the mm. interior of this of this building. So interesting. Yeah. And Nandor's so desperate to believe that he wrote a letter to a fucking mongoose. A and talking <laughs> mongoose. <Yeah. laughs> Expecting a reply. Right? You know, with those custom hands of his. And it seems very hurt he didn't get one. Yeah. He was uh yeah, he's kinda of bummed that he never got to see he Jeff. Chocolate and biscuits. <laughs> That's what he liked. He liked chocolate biscuits, and then he liked what it, I think it was bacon. Oh, who doesn't love bacon? Yeah. It all sounds sp- splendid. Mike, now that you slept on it and it's the next day, do you <laughs> have you reconsidered your hatred of Nandor Todor? Todor? Nandor, <laughs> Nandor Fodor's name? I it's, still love it. It's, I mean, I'm not a fan. Okay. But it's, <laughs> I would check. it's a tongue twister for me. It is hard to say. Yeah. 
I hear you like otters, Ian. How about you suck the jizz? <laughs> Otter my mongoose balls. <laughs> God damn, pal. What a rascal. Damn, Jeff. <laughs> So Fodor got a hold of the Sunday pictorial and to him, this was kind of his last chance to get back in the game because of Nandor's theories about these phenomena stemming from people's subconscious and him being critical of mediums and psychics. He was constantly blasted in psychic news publication, which at the time was the largest selling publication of its kind in London. This public attack on Nandor was getting so bad that he filed a lawsuit for libel a month before Alma's story hit the pictorial. I picture it like the National Enquirer fighting with the Star magazine over who has more truthful stories. (laughs) (laughs) However, before Nandor could get there, a psychic who went only by Mr. Morrison showed up. Mr. Morrison walked around the house, focusing in silence, and then he told Alma that she was a very strong carrier of ectoplasm which he said is the floating filmy substance some mediums use to materialize spirits. He also told her that her son Donald was in danger. Donald was already pretty scared of everything that was going on, and the psychic's nonsense was enough for him to go stay with other family members for a while. I don't blame him. He pulled the art bell and got the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) He was in danger, that kid, or that man. He was an older man, right? He was 16. 16. Oh, young okay. man. Young man. You keep getting Donald and George. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I did. George is the, the bull. <laughs> that's right. He was banging Alma. Uh, yeah, he was like in his late 20s, 20, 30s. Something. Right. And renting the room, which is unbecoming of a bull. We got into that. <laughs> and then Donald. He stays in the master suite. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. He told us all about how it works. Yeah. Now we know. Well, if you come to my seminar in Raleigh, you'll learn all about it. <laughs> I'm surprised you remembered that. I'm surprised too. (laughs) It's pretty good for me. Ectoplasm they used in Ghostbusters too, right? That's what they called the stuff. Yeah, it was like the slime. (laughs) And they gave us Ecto Cooler out of it, which is the greatest Uh, juice box of all time. On February 24th, Nandor got to the Fielding's home around 1130 a.m. and noted that everyone in the household looked completely worn out, like they hadn't slept in days. He wasn't invited, right? He just showed up. Like He didn't have an appointment or anything. It's not clear. Mm. I feel like he just showed up. Probably. Hey, I'm Nandor. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Hey, hi there. How are you? I, that's kind of how this stuff worked, you know? Even with UFO stuff. Remember Ed Walters, um, you know, his story of his UFO sightings started circulating around. And all of a sudden, MUFON just showed up at his front door <laughs> <laughs> unannounced. <laughs> Where's that paper mache uh, thing at? <laughs> So they went through the story, and Alma showed Nandor the evidence of everything that had been broken, along with a wardrobe that was pushed onto Donald's bed while he was staying at a relative's house, uh, which I think the psychic just got lucky with that one, that that was pushed over onto his bed. Seems kind of like, oh, if he would have been there, he would have been hurt. (laughs) After this, Nandor wanted to set up and try to see the poltergeist activity for himself. He brought his own items, so he knew that there couldn't be any tampering going on. So he set up drinking glasses, an egg, and a light bulb around the living room. He brought his own egg. That's good thinking, Nandor. (laughs) Traveled with an egg. That's right. I like to think of him that he just brought one single egg. Like, if it broke there, (laughs) he was fucked. (laughs) As he was setting up the drinking glasses, there was a loud bang on the door behind him. When he looked behind the door, a broken alarm clock was lying on the floor. Alma and Leslie said that it was the clock from their bedroom, and because everyone in the house was with Nandor when the clock hit the door, he started to think that maybe something was really going on in the fielding house. In all, Nandor recorded 29 occurrences of poltergeist activity that day, some where he saw things fly through the room with his own eyes and some that were out of sight, like a cat dish that smashed in the kitchen while everyone was in the living room. So at that point, Nandor invited Alma to the Psychical Institute's headquarters to see if the poltergeist activity followed because Nandor suspected it was all coming from Alma. She's the focus, sure. She had that pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. It seemed like everything kicked off with that. Mm. I wonder if any of the things he saw could be explained away. Like how much did he accept without questioning, you know? Yeah, I mean, the, the alarm clock, it just hit behind him. Like, he heard a bang, and mm. there's this alarm clock. It, who knows? Someone could have thrown that. 
Yeah, like, did you lock every door in the house and bar them shut and have every person in the house sit next to you on the couch so you could 100% rule out their activity? Right. right. I mean, what if the kid, their son, Donald, didn't actually go stay with a relative? Yeah. You know? Exactly. Tom Fullery going on. I'm skeptical. The following day on Friday, February 25th, 1938, Elma arrived at the Institute's headquarters where Nandor and a few of his colleagues were waiting. Nandor had set up a controlled environment with glasses and light bulbs again, but this time he had a camera running to take photographs of the activity. All the same stuff happened in front of Nandor and his colleagues like glasses flying through the air and smashing against walls. However, items from the fielding house materialized in the room. A hairbrush and a tin that Alma used to store her medications just randomly hit off a wall like they came flying through a wormhole or something. Did you find pics of this? If he had a camera set up, I couldn't. No, I couldn't either. That's a shame. Maybe they got lost with uh, his files. That's true. Presumably, yeah. Like, I wonder if there really was, you know, photographic evidence. I don't see why there wouldn't be. But, I mean, a photo of something flying through the air, What? how much is that yeah, really going to get you? That's true. And like we have photos of the Enfield Poltergeist girl. Like jumping in the air, floating, <laughs> whatever. You're like, Looks well, like yeah. a girl jumping on her bed. <laughs> so he interviewed Alma a lot um, because in a little bit here, he's going to start getting a little skeptical of things. She told him that she had an episode of blindness in 1929 where she couldn't see anything, but she could still get around. Like she was being guided psychically by something. It's interesting. Uh, she also talked a lot about a long-faced man climbing out of her wardrobe. Oh, shit. That sounds terrifying. Yeah. I immediately think of the the crooked man from uh, Conjuring. Conjuring 2 there, which was really creepy. You can buy one of those toys, crooked man toys? Oh, I absolutely would. That thing was cool as hell. Yeah. All right. That'd be cool. Start looking on eBay. Think they have them still? I have <laughs> This kind of stuff is like setting up that Alma like might her, have been concocting things mm, beforehand. And her husband was in on it. Maybe not in on it, but he uh, corroborated her story with the blindness and stuff, right? Yeah. In March, Fodor planned an afternoon trip to Bognor Regis with Alma and four members of the Institute. Nandor wanted to see if her poltergeist activity could show up in a store like Woolworths. At the jewelry counter in Woolworths, Fodor and his colleagues watched Alma pick out a ring to look at it, then gave it back to the person working at the counter. Eventually, they left the store with no luck until they turned a corner near the store. Alma said that she heard a rattle in the purse that she was carrying. Fodor took the purse from her, opened it, and found the ring that she just had tried on. He wrote, quote, My flesh creeped. The experience was rather alarming. We had committed... <laughs> We had committed psychic shoplift. Tell that to the judge. Right. <laughs> I guess you could say it was a polter heist. <laughs> it's the end of the episode. <laughs> we made this all up just for that. <laughs> Did they take the ring back? Did he say? I think so. Yeah. I don't know how they explain that one. <laughs> They're like, see what had happened. <laughs> Is the ectoplasm like mixed <laughs> with the, the brain? The poltergeist. <laughs> Muscoozy. <laughs> like he wrote that his flesh creeped and all that stuff. Um, but around this time is when he started getting skeptical because the items that were coming into the Institute that were supposedly materializing kept getting more and more elaborate. <laughs> like they stopped being a brush or a small tin like there's a fucking live mouse that randomly <laughs> popped up and stuff but it had to have materialized behind her or something like materializing in midair is one thing but if it kind of she's holding it behind her arm right. and throws it there has to be yeah you have to see that you would think you'd be able to figure out like yeah oh, she's fucking working yeah it. if she's in a room and they're filming it you can't really how do you fake that I Unless you're like, he really wants to believe. I think that's a big so he portion of this. Yeah. He looks a lot of that or tries to explain it away until he can't anymore. I think that's spot on. Exactly. And I think that's where he was getting, especially when like the mouse shows up and there's like some other crazy shit. I think that's when he starts getting like, okay, this is, this is curious. Mm. It, 
it's kind of like insulting his intelligence at that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause he Still was a dumb. really smart sure. guy and, um, it's like, I don't need this shit. I'm a psychical <laughs> mastermind. Yeah. Uh, so he wanted to use x-rays, bef- like use an x-ray to just check her out before she comes into the building. At first she was really against that idea. I wonder why <laughs> in the first couple of times she got in and there was no issues, you know, um, somehow she had tricked the x-ray <laughs> machine because eventually she was caught sneaking mm. in items. Is that a hairbrush up your ass, Alma? <laughs> <laughs> Something doesn't look right there. <laughs> he kept it from her, too. Like, all the all of his colleagues at the Psychical Institute wanted to just call her out and be done with this. Uh, and he wanted to keep it from her and just keep going with it because he felt that there was really some poltergeist stuff going on. She was just embellishing it. Yeah. He and thought she there was, was a hint of truth there somewhere. Right. Which doesn't come along every day. And when you're a guy like that who wants to believe, you're grasping at straws to to finally prove something. And I it's not even it. just him. I don't think it's just him grasping at straws. I think this is because it's like his last hurrah kind of yeah, thing. Okay. Yeah. You know, to try and get back into... But this just ended up pissing off people more. And I think this is rightfully so. He, They should... I could see them being like, Dude, let's just yeah, tell her. What and, are you doing? Yeah, just get her the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, them being so hard on him just because he said psychics are bullshit is a little is unfair. But at this point, Nandor felt the investigation was pretty much over. Um, in his opinion, there was some form of trauma in Alma's past or possible mental illness that was causing the poltergeist activity to happen, like the flying glasses that multiple people witnessed. When Nandor's colleagues got word from him that his final conclusions was that it was more than likely mental illness causing the the poltergeist activity, um, in the fall of 1938, they expelled him from the Institute and confiscated all of his papers. They were really pissed off with that. I bet they were. Poor guy. Yeah, I'm like, how they, how they just take his shit? <laughs> yeah, all that work he, he did, whether yeah. you agree with it or not, you're just going to take it. His life's work. You're done, Nandor. Beat it. I'd be like, no, I'm coming in and getting my papers. Like, can't just tell me I'm not getting my shit. Like, the fuck you are. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Nandor went on to publish two scientific papers on poltergeist phenomena, the psychoanalytic approach to the problems of occultism in 1945 and the poltergeist psychoanalyzed in 1948. As far as his research and papers from the Psychical Institute, all of that was assumed to have been destroyed in bombings during World War II. However, in 2017, Kate Summerscale, whose book I used a lot for the research, um, visited the Society for Psychical Research archive in Cambridge. That group was a rival to the Institute for Psychical Research. But somewhere down the line, they acquired all of Nandor's papers which ended up preserving awesome stories like this one because this would have definitely been lost to history. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. It's too bad those photos weren't around. That would have been something. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely uh, always a skeptic and a doubter. You know, if I could see something, then, you know, I'm more likely to believe it. Like UFO type stuff for sure. With stuff like this, I'm always just like, "Eh, I don't know. Like it's too easy to fake this stuff. Yeah. I just want to see the video of her pulling a mouse out of her pocket and throwing it. <laughs> just whipping this Where mouse. Where did that come from, Nandor? See? <laughs> He's like, oh, I have an x-ray machine, and that was up your butt. Well, they have video of the Philip experiment. You can find that, that on That table rolling around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is fucking yeah, wild. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. The table's like, whoa. It's going all over the room in circles. I don't know, man. I think there's definitely something to the idea that it would come from someone's subconscious versus like a dead spirit or something. I think that probably makes more sense to me. But I think they're very, very rare cases. I think Nandor got tricked on this one because he yeah. wanted, uh, he really wanted this one to be real. But I think there are some re- the rare ones that seem very credible. I think it's probably rare, yeah, because you're defying the laws of physics to create an yeah. entity, right? So if that really is possible, I'd love to see it. Yeah, I mean, 
in actually creating a physical entity is then you're talking a whole different thing. Then now you're talking tulpas and does the entity then achieve free will? Can you make a slave tulpa just to do whatever you want? Like a sushi chef or something we can tulpaize? <laughs> What'd you say? Tulpa ties? <laughs> Tulpatization? Yeah. yeah. Theoretically. I think, well, I think we said on the last part that, you know, we lost, but you want to do a whole show one day on tulpas. Yeah. Like it'd be fun to kind of get into what you can do, what you can't do. And just the history of it. Cause it all, right. um, like Buddhist monks, mm. it's where tulpas come from that whole idea. So it's cool stuff. It's fun to think about. So I think we're all on board that, uh, almost probably a little bit full of shit here. Definitely. Or yeah. And or just wanted so. it so badly. It may be something happened. I don't know. Maybe there was a little bit going on, but hers is weird. It wasn't, uh, like the slow burn, like most poltergeist are. Mm. Hers just kicked off right away. Aggressive. Yeah. Usually there's like this just slow burn of a couple of bangs here and there. Right. And or like the marble rolling down the hallway. Yeah. Was there any information on what ultimately happened with Alma or her family? Like, I wonder if jo- George or Don or whoever else. The maybe. husband was Leslie. The son was yeah. uh, uh, Donald. Yeah. The son was 16. Did he ever talk to anyone else about it years later and Not confirm that it was a hoax or anything like that? Not that I'm aware yeah. of. The book was um, the book was almost like a, a, a play-by-play account of everything. Hmm. So it doesn't make great for a podcast episode because you can't sit here and be like, on this day, mm-hmm. something went flying through. Right, you right, know what I mean? Right. Um, but that was, you know, it was just based off Nandor's stuff. There wasn't any. His work papers. Yeah, there yeah. wasn't any follow-up to, yeah. to what the family's up to. It's a shame. I'd be curious. Like if you blab later in life. Right. The hoax you and your mom pulled when you were 16. Like that's a good story, right? You're telling everybody. I think so. We got this Nandor guy. And then it almost makes this whole thing even more fun. Yeah. Like, we strung this guy along. Yeah. We ruined his life. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> he should have been there. He got kicked out of the society. They took all his shit. Died penniless and broke uh, homeless on the side of the road. He was ruined. It was the ultimate prank. <laughs> That's one of the things that makes me believe in Jeff's story. Because they followed up with the girl. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. But someone followed up with her yeah. years and years yeah. later. And she was like just a completely ruined person by all that shit. And she was like, it happened. Yeah, I, I wish it wouldn't yeah, have because right. it ruined my fucking life. But... Yeah, that's the stuff that it is what it is. Like when they go down with the ship like that, then makes you yeah. sort of believe it. Yeah. Yeah. A little more credibility in that story, I think. Which is crazy because it's a talking mongoose. Right. <laughs> I just, in general, when they're going down with the ship on their story, it, it makes them more credible. Yeah. Like she had as absurd as that sounds. Yeah. And Jeff even started out as a slow burn. Yeah. There's just some little noises. Then he was like, kind of talking but it was blabbered like it didn't mm-hmm. make any sense he was learning to speak yeah he you was know, figuring it out yeah these days he knows how to say fuck boy <laughs> he certainly does that's a great episode patreon check it out it was funny in the archives um okay speaking of patreon we got some new patron shout outs thank you very much to julie mark concannon drew detective cum sock <laughs> jarek twig Fab, <laughs> Ross Gordon, Colton Douglas, Marcus Allen, Madison Bodner, Mental Illness Theater, Gavin Oz, Jessica Thompson, Candace Gallen, Timber Varger, Jonathan King, Amelia Sulik, Madison Nelson, Jen Gillybird, Amanda Miller, Christian Scott, Ain L. Eakage, <laughs> I wonder where that one came from. <laughs> Gemma, Johnny XO, Haley, John Cox Tolstoy, Crystal Kelly, Tim Bird, Jen Miller, Drew Kensinger, Chad Svetlick, Constantina Ducata Erikil, Abby Cathy, Julie Marks, Alexa, Ern, Johnny Owen, Two Wander, Dabadoo, Dirt Daddy 69. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. that name just smells like scratch off tickets and skull rings. 
Put it in my dirty place, Daddy. <laughs> Dirt Daddy 69. <laughs> James Marco, Rachel, L. Brenz, Space A 69. People really like the number 69. I don't get it. It makes everything funnier. <laughs> Haley, uh, Melissa Pache, Follow the Wisps, Jessalyn Garner, The Steelers Suck, Zachary Ortloff, and Nolan Dahlhauser. Thank you all very much. Patreon.com slash Necronomapod. What was that first one? It was a detective cum sock. Yeah. Like, do you think they report to the cum commander that we had last week? Like he's in maybe. their brigade. See, maybe it's all just they're all he's <laughs> the cum commander's getting them all the joint. <laughs> the cum commander. Lieutenant cum stain. Uh, I don't know. Sheriff come on me. <laughs> His assistant deputy come in me. <laughs> it's a whole family over there. They got the Bukaki Brigade that are they're on horseback. Yeah. So they can... <laughs> <laughs> they're like the Rough Riders. <laughs> <laughs> we can't go down that road. It'll end up Teddy Roosevelt being and Emma Watson again. Uh, Ian, what do you got uh, for iTunes? I have one for Amy Da, aka Amy Squirt, longtime listener. It was titled. Uh, what was the title? Uh, Amy loves Dave more than Samantha. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, about that. It's a fight for Dave. Thanks, Amy. Steel cage match. <laughs> Dave on a pole match. <laughs> so they just hang Dave over the ring. And they have to climb the ladder, and the first one to pull him down wins. <laughs> That's funny. Al Ugora, Brenda Bellwood, Mike's right toe, Ammo Rama, Crystal Lane, Rachel Bag, Lizbot Ten, Clips OK. Cash Cater 2008 and VNK. Thank you guys for the awesome reviews. Dave, what do you got? Hey, so I have some too. We recently found out that those uh, reviews where the where we were pulling that information didn't include the international people that left reviews. I didn't know foreigners knew how to read and write. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's just an American thing. <laughs> Likes America strong. <laughs> well, that's good news. So we got more reviews. <laughs> It doesn't go all the way back, so I, I apologize up front to all those international uh, reviewers for that three we years. Not we, acknowledged. We've been skipping people. <laughs> why do I no one said anything? Hey, fuck faces. Yeah, I've left you reviews. So I got another site now where I can pull the international people. So thank so that, you. That could be your thing now. Will you do the international? Yeah, yeah, I'll pull these. Fuji Sista, Hugh Janus, <laughs> Mental <laughs> Illness Theater, Shah Pazov, Pat's Turn. Pinky Posh Fish, Fish, Fist. I wrote this last night. Pinky Posh Star Fish. He probably, it probably was fist, fist, but he was so drunk. He was like, Pinky Posh <laughs> Fish. Thank you. And West Coast Lager BC. So thank you so much. I want to try some West Coast Lager BC. Here, Vancouver is gorgeous. This was Lager like L O G G E R, like uh, a Lager. I thought it was like West Coast Lager. Well, that's not as fun. No. BC, British Columbia. Yeah. It's up there chopping Van- trees down. I hear Vancouver is awesome town. Oh, yeah. You haven't been there, have you? I have not. I would absolutely go there. First live show of Vancouver. Let's do it. Done. So we'll call it a world tour. And we just go to Vancouver. <laughs> and then come home. And then like a second show in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then we're back home. It's a weekend thing. It's a whirlwind. <laughs> it was quite the world tour. Five people showed up. I just want to use it as an excuse to go to Vancouver. <laughs> Um, all right. Good times. Apologies, everyone. You know, the show probably didn't flow as well as, you know, most of them do. Not that any of our shows really have flow. Uh, that's what I'm here for to mess all that up with my interruptions, <laughs> but this, we don't know what happened. The chip got fucked up just halfway through the, uh, the episode right after the ad break. So we had to redo it. Hopefully you guys still enjoyed the story though. Obviously the, uh, the notes and the, the story stayed the same. So, um, just the crass humor changed. Yeah. We're, we're nicer when the sun's up. <laughs> yeah, it was getting a little rowdy last night. And people are going to start asking for that. We don't have it. No, we don't have it. It is literally gone. gone. Yeah. We wish we did. But all right. You guys got anything else? Looking forward to tonight. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. We're, we're doing a, um, I guess by the time non-patrons hear this, we are released uh, on Saturday of this past weekend, uh, Paranormal Erotica Part, what, seven or eight? Five, I believe. It's only the fifth? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Good stuff. Hopefully it's better than Friday the 13th, part five. I 
I think it will be. That wouldn't be hard to do. <laughs> no, it would not. Um, I just had someone uh, recently say they listened to our year end show from 2021 and that they were crying laughing. Really? Yeah. I don't remember any of that. Nope. No, I don't remember any of those shows. That's usually the Oh, that was just a couple months ago. I, I'm just saying this, those year end shows are the drunkest usually I get for any show. And we, cause we don't like, you know, have to really focus. You just ask bullshit questions and shoot the shit. But so apparently that went well. Hmm. Um, Who knew? But yeah, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to disperse for a few hours yeah. and then come back and do uh we can't do erotic in the daylight. That's just uncomfortable. Um. And then yeah. the hairy Bigfoot cock split her <laughs> asshole open. Right. It's like the male mag, like whistling, walking by. Yeah, I need to Howdy, be- fellas. <laughs> what kids are you get, guys kids doing? getting off the school bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to be intoxicated for paranormal erotica. Yeah. I'm doing my gut busting now. There you go. Trying kombucha. Have you guys ever had it? Well, I would kayfabe, and Dave just took a sip before yeah. we started with mine. <laughs> so he has... I thought it was really good. I like it. This is the pomegranate. Health aid, kombucha, kombucha, pomegranate. I've also had a water, strawberry one, watermelon. Mm. It was tasty. I like it. And you didn't dig it? Yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Maybe I need to try it again. Well, like we said, we're healthy boys now. So I'm doing this before I pump my gut full of booze <laughs> later. <laughs> Balances out in the end. Yeah. It's all well, And we switched to whiskey from beer. So, you right. know, it's it's our health plan. Much healthier. And you put ice in it, so it's water. We talked about that at the yeah. beginning of this episode. Right. We're recapping that uh, for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Lettuce and tomato on a burger, <laughs> it's a salad. You'll have a double cheese salad. Uh, if you only eat half a can of SpaghettiOs, that's half the calories. If you eat the other half 20 minutes later, that's just half the calories. It works out. Follow Mike for more tips. <laughs> We're going to do what you said on the part one. Well, I say part one. Everyone listening to this, it was like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> no, we're going to start our own uh, health, health advice podcast. It's a weird show. Yeah, this one's <laughs> some mind fuck. <laughs> People are hearing this all in like one hour. Right. But for us, we're, you know, 14, 15 We've been hazy later. on what we said, yeah. you know. We're really hyping it up of how drunk we were and probably how awesome last night's show was. <laughs> People are like, those mother fucking dumbasses. We got into some Barney and... I know. Michael oh, Jackson. I forgot we're that. doing a bunch of bets. Oh, oh yeah, fun. Michael Jackson showed up. But like, I don't remember how we naturally got to that. Like, it wasn't yeah, a bit. I don't remember. Like, and then you know, today it's like you can't. It was just authentic. It yeah. was you know, it just happened. Yeah, we don't ever plan anything. Oh no! Hey, I barely <laughs> read the fucking notes. You think I'm thinking ahead about this stuff? <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, we appreciate it. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully that won't happen again. We'll make sure it doesn't. But uh, thanks a lot. We are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube at Necronomapod, Amazon.com. Search Necronomapod for all the latest merch. Necronomapod.com for our stickers and Patreon.com slash Necronomapod for Jeff the Talking Mongoose and a whole archive of fun bonus content, including... The newest paranormal erotica. Thanks. All right, you guys ready for a cool down beer? I'm gonna have a cool down cup of coffee, I think. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>